Welcome to another video. My name is Raul and I'll be guiding you. Let's get started in integrating Apple Pay. This is part three of integrating PayPal checkout. Adding Apple Pay using our alternative payment methods integration is comprised of a few components. Secure domain name association, front end and back end code or integration, and end to end testing with an Apple Pay sandbox wallet. This video will go over the first two components. Apple Pay requires that you integrate even Sandbox in a qualified domain name secured with a valid SSL certificate. So you're not able to do these tests in localhost like I've been doing in my previous videos. I've chosen render.com to pull my code from GitHub using their services product and provide me a secured URL where I can load up my Apple Pay integration. You can choose any other online platform that will serve your front end and back end website files with a secured domain. Let me show you where you need to add your domain name in your PayPal account. Log into the Sandbox seller account. I'm using the one from the first two videos and hover over your name at the top right and click on account settings. Then at the bottom left in the menu, click on payment methods and we're going to click on manage Apple Pay to the far right here. Here you will see your previous URLs that you've added if you have done so. Otherwise, let's click on add domain. Here you're asked for a URL. You can write it out just like this, you're given a link to download a file. Here's the name of the file. It's important to note that the file has no file extension. At times, an Apple machine may append a file extension. If that happens, then just rename it and remove it. We are instructed in step three here to make this file accessible in a specific directory of your website URL. That will be the root of your website, a directory named dot well dash known. And inside of that folder, just drop the file that you downloaded, as well as make sure that the permissions on this path are accessible to all. Let's navigate to our developer portal and click on the REST app that you created for this project. If this seems like we jumped ahead somewhere, please review the other videos of this series, as well as another video that we have called how to create a REST app. Here I am in the details of the REST app in my developer portal. If you scroll down here, we see we have advanced credit and debit card payments feature enabled in this sandbox account because it's a prerequisite for Apple Pay to work. And nested inside of that is the mention of Apple Pay. Please enable this Apple Pay checkbox as well for this to work. Save this as well as click on manage and that will also take us to the same place where you can add your domain name. So this is just another way to get here. Make sure you add the domain name after you configure that file from Apple Pay that our dashboard provided to you so that when you attempt to add the domain name it will verify the location of that file successfully. For Sandbox just like how we're doing here it will allow you to add any URL without any real verification. But for production, Apple will check that it's truly there and that it's accurate. In a few moments, we'll take a look at our working code to see how we can get that file to load properly. If you've been following along these video series, we've been selling different types of products. In this example, I created this image, printed it, and I'm selling it to be shipped out as wall art or as a poster for anybody interested. But of course, that's just a demo example. These concepts will work for anything payments related. If I scroll down here, you'll see what the end result looks like now that we have our Apple Pay button added. And I'm currently using my Mac and I'm using the Safari browser as Apple Pay has a few minimum requirements to even be used. All those appropriate links and docs on those minimum requirements will be in the description. Switching to the code now, here's that domain association file that we're given by Apple within our PayPal dashboard in that last page that I just covered. As you can see, it's just a file with a bunch of numbers. Nevertheless, we can't have it be a .txt file or .dmg or anything else. Here you'll see that I have it in my root directory of my file. So in my case, since I'm using Node.js for the backend as well as Express for my routes, I have to create a URL route specifically for where Apple expects to see this file loaded in. If your setup has real directories, then you can just create a folder with the name .well-known and place the file in there and you're done. Other setups may have other different configurations, so do yours accordingly. Let's start with the server-side JavaScript file for this Node project. So it's the same file as before. I've really only changed two things here, and I'll tell you those two things now. The first one is if we scroll down and navigate to our complete order endpoint, I'll highlight this area here. Previously, to check if a transaction was successful, all I did was check the JSON response 
.id, and that told me if a transaction ID was created, which in turn made my code think that the payment was successful. This isn't quite accurate. Although in that circumstance, the transaction ID was created, all that means is that the transaction attempt was successfully completed and the new transaction record exists. But the actual status of the transaction that was attempted is nested deep in the response object, as I'll show you here in the purchase units, first array, dot payments, then inside of the intent object, which is determined if this was authorized and then its authorizations or its captures, then the first array, and finally the status. If that says completed, then is when we know if the payment was successful. And then I send the email shown here. There are a few other statuses that can also arise, such as pending or on hold or decline. So you'll want to add other handlers for that. For this demo, I only shared the happy path on the server side. Next, let's add the domain association file route, scrolling down to find the get route. Here it is. As you can see, the URL that somebody has to type out is this here. That's the same one that was shown to me in the PayPal dashboard. And I'm just having my code send this file with the same name shown here. And here's the file. So it's pretty simple using Express. You'll have to get this done whichever method suits your setup. And I won't go into that large paragraph of code down below, but the other thing that I did was make sure that the image URL in the email gets updated to, to this updated image shown here on the front end. And that's it for this file. Okay, so moving on to the front end HTML file. First thing is we must add the Apple Pay JavaScript SDK in the head. We are going to use Apple Pay's methods straight from their SDK, as well as PayPal's SDK adds some complementary methods that will offload some important required server side Apple Pay functions that we won't make you add to your server. Next, I also updated that same image URL here. And if we find our payments container here, I've added another div container below to hold the Apple Pay button element if it's deemed that the user should see it. Heading over to the CSS file, I only added the Apple Pay button custom CSS that you will find, and it's a straight copy and paste from Apple's dev docs. I'll link to that as well so that you can customize the color width and verbiage all to your website's needs. Lastly, let's take a look at the front end JavaScript functions that will make all of this work. We start with this check Apple Pay method that I made, and it just checks if the Apple Pay SDK is even loaded. And if it is, then they have a function called can make payments. That will tell you if the machine is even set up to make Apple Pay payments or not. Once the basic checks are done, I use that function here and chain it to initiate some basic configuration variables. Here we are using the PayPal SDK to fetch the client ID that is currently being used and provide some placeholder configurations for Apple Pay that we will use as well. One result of that Apple Pay underscore config object is if this PayPal account is even eligible for Apple Pay. On that previous REST page, we already enabled it. If it's enabled, then we will append the actual Apple Pay button that uses the CSS that we just looked at. And so that I can access these configuration settings outside of these promises, I'm saving it to a global variable here. I have a few nested as well as top level catch errors here for these promises. Now let's move on to the two principal methods that Apple Pay gives us to use. PayPal's SDK will provide you with these methods. You just have to insert them in the correct Apple Pay object as we will see shortly. I've created this Apple Pay payment authorized function that will take in the user click event after the button is clicked on and I've saved the payment object and here you'll see that I'm calling the PayPal create order API endpoint that we have created. Nothing new here from the previous videos. So I get the response and we'll use PayPal's helper function dot confirm order that will reach out to Apple and essentially do the same thing and create the same order on the Apple side of things based on the PayPal order ID that we pass it along with the other values. Again, this is all copy and paste stuff right from the developer docs. We just need to ensure that it's a valid PayPal order ID. Once that process is done, it's time to complete the order the usual way. So this whole fetch call runs our complete order API call. Once again, nothing different from all the previous videos that we've seen on this endpoint. The only thing to note is that instead of taking the email from the user's input from the browser, I've extracted it from the Apple Pay response object for a more frictionless experience. You're welcome to still ask them for an email in case they want it to be different from what they've saved on their Apple Pay wallet or in case you just want to do that. But in this case, I took it from the shipping contact information object that Apple provides. 
Once that API call is complete, let's revisit that accuracy correction that I showed on the server side code that I added so that our code looks at the actual payment to see if it was complete or not, as opposed to showing if the transaction attempt was completed or not. And we will use the intent object here, and that's nothing new from the previous videos. It matches the same stuff that we're checking over here in the server side code. And let's go back to the front end. And we are checking the purchase units here, first array value, payments, and so on and so forth until we can determine if the payment itself is in the completed status. If so, then it will display the success message as per usual, but we also have to let the current Apple Pay session, remember the buyer is currently looking at an Apple Pay payment sheet saying it's loaded and it's processing. We have to update that screen for them to know that the payment is good. So we will send a status success to our current Apple Pay session. As I mentioned in the server side code, this only handles completed status, but just like how there are different statuses for PayPal payments, such as declines, holds, pending, etc. We could also use the many different Apple Pay status updates as well as mapping them to ours. I'll provide a documentation on that as well. Here, at the very least, I've added the catch all to say status order failure for the Apple Pay payment sheet. The second important Apple Pay method is the validate merchant session. This will check if the URL is associated correctly as well as the association domain file and other things related to the merchant. So I create my own function here, but then I just immediately run the Apple Pay function that PayPal has wrapped in our SDKs. So we will do Apple Pay dot validate merchant. And once again, these are all copy and paste values you will find in the documentation links. Once that function is done successfully, we will update the session, telling it that it was validated successfully. Otherwise, if it wasn't, we will catch the error and abort the current session. That's it for the two important methods. To trigger them, it will start with the user event. So I have created a function that will handle the user clicking on the button and immediately define Apple Pay's payment request object. Once again, all this is copy and paste, but of course you can remove or extend information in this request using Apple Pay's docs. Earlier, I mentioned that PayPal tries to make it easier for you and provides you with placeholder object that answers a lot of the questions that Apple Pay asks for in this object, such as the country code and the merchant capabilities and supported networks. These could be manually built by you if you wish, but you can just use this object here that we provided you earlier. We also have the currency code and which required fields you want Apple Pay to collect for you in that Apple payment sheet so that you could use later on as info, such as the postal address, email, phone, name, this is what gave me that email on the other function where I leveraged that for my use in this project. You can do the same with other pieces of info. Then we have a total object, and this is pre-filled out here as well to determine what the user will see on that payment sheet. Once that object is ready, we will initiate a new Apple Pay session, and Apple Pay will ask us to fill out an item called on validate merchant which we already have a function ready to do just that. And it will ask us to provide a function for an item called on payment authorize. And once again, just as I have already gone over it, we have a function for that as well. Once we have loaded all the required info, we will call the begin function. And remember, this all happens within a second right after the user event has occurred, such as clicking on the Apple Pay button. Great, that's it for the code review. Now let's test all of this out. Just a reminder of what we haven't done here for testing for full transparency. I still want to help everybody, even if it's merely providing the steps that you can research on your own. But if you want to do end to end sandbox testing, you will still need to roughly complete the following steps. Enroll in the Apple Pay developer program, get accepted. Usually within 24 hours, you will get an acceptance email. Log into the Apple Pay developer account to create sandbox accounts. Log in at least once, preferably on any browser to that sandbox account that you configured so that it could trigger and go through the new user flow and get the account truly activated. It will have you accept the terms and all that good stuff. Then go into the system settings of the Apple Pay compatible device that you want to use and set up that sandbox account that you've activated and make sure that there is no other iCloud account logged in already. Unfortunately, if you have your personal real Apple Pay account logged in, it won't allow you to run both simultaneously. You'll have to log out or use a different device. Once you've logged in, then you should be able to go through the demo that I'm about to show. So let's do it. Here's our website. And as you can see above in the URL, it's not localhost. I've uploaded it to render.com. You can use any platform out there. And you'll notice that there is a padlock icon, which indicates that an SSL is installed. Now I can scroll down to the Apple Pay button and I'll click it. We will wait a little bit. It's validating the merchant. And let me go ahead and change the card here to 
any other test card here. Any of these will do. And now it's telling me to pay with Touch ID because that's what I have configured on this device. I'll show you a little preview here and I'm just using the finger that it's scanned before and very quickly it changed to processing payment and now it's done. The payment sheet will disappear and we will get our usual success message. Everything is the same there and our buttons have also gone away just as the previous behavior that we're used to. We have now successfully integrated Apple Pay.